It's National Signing Day. Signed 19. I guess the story is that they miss out on two wide receivers that they had committed to the class for so long, and Rakeem Jarrett, the five-star out of Maryland, who ended up signing with Maryland with the, Tur- um, with the Terps, and then Jermaine Burton, who is one of the high, uh, high-rated high wide receivers out of California. He ended up going back to his home state of Georgia. Both those guys had been committed to the class for, uh, for over four or five months, and uh, yesterday on National Signing Day flipped. They do get 19. They do get a couple of five-stars, Eric Gilbert, the tight end, Elias Ricks. Um, but a lot of people talking about receivers that they miss on. What was your what was your impressions of the class? Yeah, you know, it kind of the same. Um, recruiting is so weird, but I think this is a theme that you see happen every year where Mama in the distance from home went out in the end. I mean, it's happened with LSU before, where yeah. they've where they've gotten guys late that were previously committed. Jamar Chase was committed to a couple other spots before he picked LSU. You you see it happen from time to time where you know the the appeal of staying close to home being near your parents and your, your family can get to the game, that s- seems to win out late a lot. So that's part of the story. I do think a lot of times the late stuff overshadows the early stuff. Like, yeah, they lost out on two guys last year, but they still got Eric Gilbert, who's the Gatorade Player of the Year. They still got Elias Ricks, who I'm excited about that because you got Derek Stingley on one side, you got Ricks on the other. Not saying that he steps in and starts necessarily, but competes. That, that's, that's a heck of a foundation to build on going forward in addition to Cordell Flott and the guys that have been here and played a little bit. So I get excited about those guys too. I think it's a really good D-line haul, which has been an emphasis for Coach O for the last few years with with Roy and um, some of the other kids that they picked Guillory. up in the class, Guillory. That, that's some some SEC defensive line quality that you need and you have to have. And and then to get to hit late on Doomerville, uh, the offensive tackle, I, I think he's an SEC tackle, which you got to have. And, and to me, I, the late stuff, it bums you out. It, it's annoying. You get excited about these guys that have been committed for a while and, and it d- doesn't fall through for them. Uh, but to me, I think you have to focus on the core of the class, where they're at, and then where they're going to go from here. They now have some flexibility to, to go out and address some needs. There's still some big fish out there, and, and, and that's what they'll do. I think if there's any position on, on LSU's team that you feel like you may be able to get away with the coaches developing and guys find, and, and, and coaches being able to find other guys at that position to produce, it would be wide receiver. Yeah. Just because of the amount that they've, they've thrown the ball in this new offense, the amount that they spread the ball around, uh, and the guys that they already have. I think that we're, we're, we're forgetting the, the, the wide receivers that they have on the roster right now that didn't play a lot. Trey Palmer is the, the first that, that comes to mind. I think Racy McMath is another guy that we've talked a lot about during the season, just can't seem to find, you know, he can't get the reps because there's guys in front of him. I think they'll play a lot of football. And then you return Chase and Marshall uh, next season. So I think the wide receiver immediately is in good hands. And I think that you can find people at that spot, especially if LSU continues to produce. I mean, it's crazy to think that that you pull the wide receivers two years ago, <laughs> right, in, in the class. You yeah. got a headline by Jamar Chase, Terrace Marshall, a yep. couple of five-star guys. And that, why, and that offense is you know, limping in to signing day. Uh, meanwhile, this offense is setting national records, SEC records, uh, and two of the, the, the most high-profile wide receivers that were committed had a spot, promised a spot the entire time, uh, bail on signing day. I mean, it's just a crazy world that yeah. recruiting is. You also have to consider context. Like, usually LSU's best recruiting classes are when Louisiana is loaded, and you've got five, six, five-star type talents in Louisiana. That wasn't the case this year. There weren't that elite of talent in the state of Louisiana. And so when that happens, really what you're thinking is, all right, get the best players in the state, and then let's see what we can do out of the state. And it may not be our best recruiting year, but we're going to have a good foundation of in-state kids. We'll try to hit on some kids out outside of the state and then build from there. And then when the next season comes along, usually it's cyclical. Louisiana gets stronger, and then you shore up at home. So usually years like this where you don't have the loaded in-state talent of you know four or five five-star types with Jamar Chase, with yeah. Terrace Marshall – you're just trying to shore up. And LSU did more than shore up. They went out and got guys. I mean, they went out and got two five-stars from out of state. That's that's a good haul. And then they, they consolidated in state, got the guys they needed to. So it's it's all about – it's hard to look at a recruiting class in just one season. You have to look at it in context of what came before, what comes next. And I think at receiver, they'll be fine, man. Like, Racy McMath is going to be a good, good, productive football player for LSU. Terrace Marshall and Jamar Chase, obviously, we know about them. I mean, Trey Palmer, we were talking about – uh, that kid's gonna be special. Yeah. Like if he if he gets it if he gets the playbook down if he goes about things the right way. Just because he hadn't produced as a freshman, 
he's got a chance to be special. He's got all the talent in the world. Kayshawn Butte could be special. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's a guy that they got yesterday in that class alongside Coy Moore, who's another player out of Rummel uh, that's coming over in the 2020 class. All right.